I won't lie, this was a pretty depressing time for Spider-Man fans. Other than JMS's run, this was a particularly hard era to run through. You know, I'm talking about One More Day, Casada's whole spiel, and slots. Ooh. However, one note that is particularly good, that the art and coloring still comes out as excellent within this time. Thanks to McFarlane from the Silver Age, the Bronze Age ushered in a whole new cast of style and flow and creativity unlike seen before, so it prevents the comics from looking dry and using that house style that everybody loves to. This is going to cover from JMS's run to the end of Slot's run, they'll go down swinging, and some of the most recent, recent names will be listed, the first one being John Romita Jr. His first run of the Bronze Age started with the JMS run and it was nothing short of pure bliss in all honesty. Might be because of the coloring, but almost every drawing and character was really nice and had a nice pop to it. The characters are expressive, clean, and sure as hell dynamic. As I mentioned in the last video, John Romita Jr. is my favorite artist, and one of the favorite things is his fight sequences. I cannot get enough of it, just he knows what he's doing, and he also draws a really good Spider-Man while he's at it. His eyes and symbols are some of my favorite, however, not my number one pick when it comes to Spider-Man. He created some of those important characters in the Spider-Man mythos. Some characters like Ezekiel, Sharthra, and the, uh, you know, ever so popularly loved by Dan Slott and Marvel. Most of the characters are still used today, especially with, you know, like it just a Dan Slott in his Spider-Verse story that, you know, still can never end. John Romita Jr. worked for around five years on the JMS run before moving on to the next guy who was Mike Diado Jr. He's a very stylized artist. His style goes for more hyper-realistic and it's kind of mesmerizing. They kind of look like actual people with a lot of definition to almost everything. Like it was just traced off of an actual picture. For how well the characters are, I was genuinely surprised on how well the action was choreographed. The fight with more one was probably my favorite within the autos and he's one of the artists that worked on the other storyline, which is fucking crazy as shit. It's a lot of symbolism and all that. And he was really good at drawing the monsters and the creepy spiders throughout this and that man spider thing. I don't know what the actual name is, but that's what I'm going to call it. And the whole Cocoon segment within the other was really well scripted and trippy and just mindfuck and I loved it. He did his job well and made it engaging. I got lost while reading it while I was actually writing notes for this segment. But he didn't work on it for too long. He only worked with the new Avengers and the Invincible Iron Man. So he gets around from time to time. But he was the last artist before... Garney for the JMS run. When I was originally thinking back of the artist, I thought Garney was a pretty bland and not really inspired artist, but after reading I was fucking wrong as shit. Garney made Peter look really intimidating and scary, which which is good for the back in black saga story that he did. He knows how to story build as well and tell a really, really good story without dialogue. I'm pretty sure there's like three or four times that he's done this just within like a few issues. It just it's clear about the tension and morbid that's going on within the story and he was the artist during the back and black saga, which I just said. And that is my personal favorite arc in the JMS run. I don't think it was I don't think any other artist could have done it just as well as he did. Not even John Romita Jr. You know how much I love him. He drew the King Pin versus Spider-Man, which is unironically one of the best fight sequences I have ever seen within the Bronze Age, but only by a smidget, which I'll get to later. I'm not gonna word vomit as to why it works well, but this panel layout, characters, the tension, just real it really makes me want to turn the page. He was on for an even shorter time than Diado. His art wasn't shown as properly as it should have, and you know, I feel like it's unbearable. Now Joe Casada. I'm just gonna make this section brief because I don't really have anything to say to this man. I will say his art is definitely unique and weird, but in a purely objective state, I it's good. It's good. He had this detail and really good shadows, but that's all I'm really gonna say to him. He doesn't really deserve that much credit for what he did. New brand new day saga. The first one we had is Salvador Larca. I believe I'm saying that wrong, but he was the first one after the one more, after the one more day, but I think his art was just right at best. Say simply, his characters were just really stiff and didn't really have much energy and flow to them. No, if I, I really don't know if it was just because I was upset about one more day, but I just didn't really feel engaged or interested like at all. But he didn't work on the book for that long either. Now, Marcos Martin is another story. His art is really unique. and I honestly wanted to keep reading, but he didn't work on it after slots run, unfortunately. His tort telling was really good, just like Garney. He had a lot of just zero dialogue panels, which was great. His sequence during the No One Dies storyline. Anyone that has read the book can agree that it's very obviously just crazy and anybody can just enjoy it. His action and energy was also very much on display in 
every single panel when drawing. It might not be the most accurate in terms of human anatomy, but whenever someone's feeling a certain type of way, like sad or whatever, you can very clearly see it and understand it. As I mentioned earlier, he worked in the No One Dies run, which is my third act favorite slot run, actually. Just the theme and story work with everything he conveys, the characters, setting, tension, all that demonstrated really well within his writing. And he worked on the story for on and off for the rest of the time slots book. I believe as of now, he worked on The Walking Dead. Now Roberto Ramos, on the other hand, just like Romita Jr., is a very controversial figure when people discuss Spider-Man artists. Many people dislike it for not being proportionally accurate, whatever. It's understandable when you look at it, the bending can be out of whack at times, but I, for one, can not get enough of his art. I love it. I noticed I have really, really, really like whenever people use their own distinct styles as their creativity in a way that fits it, especially for Spider-Man. It helps us like the weird like bug-like and everybody talks, everybody that he draws acts in a very dynamic, super, super energetic way that I've never seen before. It's great. The posing, everything is just on point. Ramos was like the main man for slot for most of this run. When it came to artists, he drew for slot for nearly the entire run and stayed to the very end. Ramos worked on the titles like Big Time, Spider Island, and Tabertha the ever so popular Superior Spider-Man, which is my second favorite. As of right now, Ramos works on The Strange Academy, which is honestly a really good read. I would check it out if you haven't. Now, Giuseppe Camuncoli. There isn't much to say about him. Get at what he does. He doesn't really stand on any major way. He draws Spider-Man in a pretty bulky and hefty way, though. He has some pretty large traps for, you know, just being Spider-Man. Or there are times where the faces can be squished or flat and his head just curves over like a circle rather than like a bump like an actual skull does but nothing like deal breaking here now ryan stegman on the other hand i love this man's art him and stuart eyman are some of my favorites within the slot run everybody and everything is energetic expressive and clear and moment to moment it's great he did most of the work throughout slots run at least superior spider-man which I think he peaked in terms of art. He also worked on Renew Vows, which if you haven't read it, you can read it. Body structure designs are all really drawn in a way that's distinct for distinctly segment that I feel makes the art superior, unintended fun the most. Every moment feels tensionful, which helps the reader get immersed in the story just that little bit more. Actions well paneled, laid out, great, great, great. The detail's obvious, just look at it. It doesn't look rushed or sloppy, but I can't really explain it, you just have to see it, but the level of passion between every single panel and sketch is obvious. He now works with the team that created Absolute Carnage on a new story called Vanish. Pretty interesting story. I'm currently reading it. Now, Matteo Baffinghi. He worked, he was like kind of an artist during the Parker Industries era, during like all that, but I have no idea what to really say about this guy. He worked on several issues, but it was the most boring art I've ever seen. Every character feels stiff and rushed and whatever. The action wasn't clear or understandable. And Peter, for some reason, looks like he's in his 40s or even 50s, but he just looks done with like everything. I can't really explain it. Now, Stuart Iman. In my opinion, obviously biased, but I ironically believe he is one of the best artists in the entire comics industry. Every artist in the comic that he draws, great, perfect, spot on. I can't tell any major differences. There isn't any large and overwhelming flaws within the art, characters, proportions, structure, and anatomy. Energetic, lawless, perfect, and it's constantly moving and the action's great. His paneling, story beats are without a doubt intense and even fantastic. Every single moment gets just the right amount of focus and needs in order to make the story flow in a natural way. He was the final artist during the main go down swinging story, which is my favorite within Slots Run. The final fight between Green Goblin and Spider Man is my second favorite, but can't really beat at the Kingpin, in my opinion. But from the JMS run all the way to the end of the Slots Run, there's a large candidate compared to last time. There's more than the Silver Age, I counted, there's about three or four. My three places goes to Iman, Stegman, and Ramita Jr. Even though Ramita Jr. will probably be always my favorite artist, his current run does kind of suck ass though. I don't blame him for that though, because age fall off, but he's trying, he's trying. I can appreciate that. Every artist this time was, you know, great and I enjoyed it. Except maybe that fucking Mateo guy. No hate towards him. But this era was the first time that Spider-Man comics became as popular as they were, helping them become their own thing. Tom McFarland helped creators break that mold of the house style and everybody's able to be as creative and wacky as possible. Results 
may vary on what you guys think about it, but I love each and every buddy one of them. It's a detail. The next video is going to be discussing the modern age that covers Spencer's run. I might make a video about this Ultimate Spider-Man artist since there's only three I might cram it in, but I'm not sure. But it won't be very long, the next video. But really, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed and have a good day.